basically the Barbara Walters one on one right here with the infamous Johnny Craig. How you doing? Just so you know, the views and opinions expressed here do not reflect those of Rise Records, Emerosa, Artery, or anyone affiliated with Johnny Craig. Johnny, what's going on, bro? Nothing, man. Just hanging out, having fun on the delicious tour. Just Chill, dude. How you doing? I'm doing good, dude. I'm sitting next to you. I'm, I'm pretty chill. All right, man. So first things first, your voice, very, very well-known voice, very impeccable voice. How did you get this? Uh, not really quite sure, actually. Uh, I never took any vocal lessons, and um, I never did any choir. I got kicked out of choir. My mom's always been a singer. She's really like hymns. She goes to church and stuff, but that's about it. I just, you know, kind of do what I do. I've learned everything I've learned from various people that I've you know been in bands with and they've taught me a lot so very nice now I'm sure the question on everyone's mind seeing you in Emma Rosa and they're wondering their heads what exactly happened with Dance Gavin Dance that you're now part of Emma Rosa um, well it's it's very clear obviously with John and Eric quitting as well you know after I quit nobody in the band got along you know I don't even know if they still get along um, we all just kind of stayed together do we did because things picked up so fast you know everything just fucking just kind of went in a spiral and we're like, let's do this. But towards the end, you know, I, I wasn't happy. I was doing a lot of drugs. I was getting hammered every night just because you know, I was trying to, I was trying to make it through. I was trying to make it through the, you know, the experience. But in the end, we didn't get along and uh, shit went sour. Damn. Now there's something I've always noticed about the Dance Gavin Dance record, Downtown Battle Mountain. There's a song on there called It's Safe to Say She Digs the Back Seat. They don't play the song live anymore. I seen you were the only one that did it live. And I want to know, what was your part in that song? It seems like a very Johnny song to me. I wrote the song, um, not music or anything, I wrote all the lyrics, the idea for it. It was uh, this chick named Rachel. In my first band, you know, we went. To, I came down to Sacramento, did a tour, and um, I met this chick, you know, we hooked up, whatever. I was like crazy about her. Um, I moved to Sacramento when I was when I started, first started dance Gavin, I was like, yo. Uh, I called her up, I was like, let's hang out. You know, we hung out a few days. I kept texting her and shit, and all of a sudden she was like, Yo, you know, quit talking to me, my boyfriend's gonna be you. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, uh. So, you know, I was like, fine, whatever, you're a cunt. Everything went from there. Um, she hit me up like like two days before Christmas, you know, after Downtown Battle Mountain came out. And she was like, yeah, I bought you a present, I'm gonna come over, I'm like, okay. She bought you a present after the CD drops. Yeah, yeah, she came over, she had, she has no, she probably still has no idea the song's about her. <laughs> she came she over, now. She, she bought me a microphone, um, and uh, we, we, we stored it some OCs. You know, when I was still doing drugs and shit, and uh, yeah, she, that was about it. And it's pretty much just all about her. I fucked her in her like suburban like a couple times, and then she just disappeared again. So I say to say she digs the back seat. Climbing the back seat like luggage. <laughs> My favorite song by far to this day. So what exactly like what are your opinions on Dance Gavin right now? I love the dude still. Um, I love Mingus, the drummer. He's always been a good friend of mine. Will, you know, Will's a stoner. I have no really opinion on him. He's a good guy. He doesn't, he doesn't really do anything with smoke weed, but I'm so chill with him, like, I don't care about him. Zach, I could give a fuck about him. He became our merch guy and then our guitar player. I still don't give a fuck about that kid. Now, I've heard some, some shit on the internet, watched some videos, and um, calling out some, some former members of Emerosa. I called him out, I called him out, call uh, you know, he, I look at the YouTube videos that we have every day, and um, he just sits there and talks like non-stop shit in the comments, and one day, you know, we got a little tipsy before uh, the North Carolina show. We're on tour with the Sky Eats airplane. And uh, I was like, fuck it. I was like, I'm going to call him out. And I called him out. And uh, I didn't really... I was happy about it, but our manager wasn't too happy. He was the same manager. It didn't really go out very well. So. Now, when I, I interviewed a Graceful, and Casey from the band said that one of the possible reasons you would be talking about Chris and his wife would be that uh, Emma Rosa received supposedly bad reviews on, their, on the Relativity album because you guys went from being a metalcore band to now being... This, this ambient band that, that Johnny's in. Well, like, what do you say about that? My, my opinion on that is, you know, we they they were like an under oath rip off band. Like even Chris, he was he did like like rip offs of like the melodies from the under oath singer. So I was like, you know what? I don't really care. I, don't, I really don't think too much about it because we're actually making real music, and they were just kind of you know sliding into the same genre as everyone else. And I feel like we're trying to do something different, trying to have a better sound than what they used to have. And that's why they got rid of him and got me. Because I, he, he was still in the band when they got me. I came to Kentucky Trout for them, and he was still in the band. They let me go. So that's, I think that's what he's a little buttered about. And as far as his wife and stuff, they're not really married. Oh. That's, that's, the, that's the, the word on the streets is that they're not really married at all. Oh, There's, did not know that. 
you know, might be a little little source that uh, named Ashley Francis, but that's, you know, that's, another, that's another story another time. So from going from Dance Gavin to Emma Rosa, and you say you used to do drugs, so you cleaned up to get in this band pretty much? Um, I cleaned up a little bit, you know, I, I still drink, you know, but half the fucking people in the world drink. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with a little drinking. Yeah. Down with that. Down with that. We good? We... Okay, sweet. So, what is this project you have going on with Vic Fuentes and a couple other guys I hear about? Um, it's me, Craig Owens, uh, Vic, Mike, Vic and Mike Fuentes, Nick Martin, uh, a few other people. Anthony Green's going to be on at Sierra from Versa Merch, maybe. We don't know if she's confirmed yet. It's just uh, a little something to do, have some fun. We're going to go to Seattle. Um, I can't really give any real information about it. There's a few songs right now we're working on. I can't release anything too crazy, but uh, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be crazy, and we're going to have a good time, and I think your kids are really going to fucking enjoy it. Is it anything along the lines of Sounds of Animals Fighting? Um, as far as I'm concerned, it right now it has nothing to do with it. Very nice. Do you guys have any sort of idea what it's going to be, just a super album with a bunch of super vocalists? It's, 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 it's just going to be fun. Are we done skis? Is it dead? Nope. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yeah, we're keep going. Um, Apparently the battery's gonna die, so we're trying to rush as fast as we can here, guys. For shizzle. So ask, ask, let's, let's get one more question out here before it dies on us. Exactly. Get a couple, dude. We're good. So, Johnny, if you were to die tomorrow, for instance, what do you want people to remember Johnny Craig as? Like, <laughs> what is the one thing you stand for over anything in the world? Dude, man, to be honest with you, like, I've always had this problem, like, when uh, that vlog came out from Dance Gavin and stuff, and like a lot of that shit happened, you know, I, I just, like, took a step back and I was like, you know, I, ne I never really asked to be a role model. I just, my main thing in life was I just, I wanted to sing. And I never took the, you know, the time to think, yo, you know, these kids look up to me, all, like, tons of kids look to me, they all, they know my words, they follow my music, but I never wanted to be like a role model, you know, I just, I wanted to live my life and just sing and just live it and be the best I could. So I think that if, if, if they could take anything from that, I just want kids to know that, you know, if you're happy doing something, no matter what other people think, I think that you should just go for it and just have the fucking best time of your life doing it because no one, no one in this world is gonna take that away from you if you have the strongest feelings about it, so. I like that philosophy, I like that a lot. What was your initial response when they posted that blog that they later took down, but um, we're still up for a good week and I was, a half. Like, I was a little, you know, I was a little skeptical about it. What, to be honest with you, they took a lot of, uh, they took a lot of things in my life, like a lot of things in my past. Some of that stuff is actually true, but they took a lot of it and they turned it around is what they did. Like they added on parts, they exaggerated about many things. So that's, that was, that, that was my worst, you know, fear about it was like kids aren't going to understand that. They're not going to see that, you know, they took actual things like my drug addiction, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, they just turned it around saying, you know, I'm still addicted to drugs, I've lost my voice, stuff like that. So, that was my biggest fear, was so, uh, kids, you know, they made the whole, the, they made the whole world hate me pretty much, and I'm sitting here trying to, you know, win them back, so. Were you, do you feel you were actually responsible for Sean O'Sullivan leaving Dance Gavin? No, I still talk to him every day, actually. He's happy in the band he was, he was never happy in our band, because Will and him conflicted about Lee and stuff like that, but, you know, that's, that's not my place to speak of, I don't write the music, so. Yeah. So all these people that are misconstrued and going on the internet and saying, oh, Johnny's rude, Johnny does this, like, I've seen these resp these these messages, and the first thing I told somebody was, like, I've met Johnny on tour when Dance Gavin first headlined, and Johnny was actually the only one who sat and talked to me for more than a minute, no one else really gave a shit, like, what do you say about those kids who, who think you're, you're some rude, unapproachable guy? You guys, um, to be honest, you guys can think whatever you want, really. You know, I'm pretty down to earth. I like to do, you know, certain things. I like to have fun. Uh, like I said, I like to live my life to the fullest. But uh, I'm never rude, and I never would ever, ever turn anyone away. So if you guys want to come talk to me, you guys want to find out that I'm not, you know, the dick that everyone thinks I am, then please come down, hang out, have a good time, talk to me, ask me anything. I'm super open and ready to answer any questions you guys have. Perfect. Johnny, what do you got coming up next? What's going on with them, Rose? So what's going on with you? Um, we have a CD. We're trying, to, we're trying to write a new CD right now. They want, they want to get us in uh, the studio by May. <coughs> they, they want to have it out by uh, the next year, by the summer of my next year. And uh, it's going to be good. Because the last CD um, was really hard to write because I just I got shoved into the band. But I did my best to go in there and shoot the vocals out as fast as possible. This time I actually have a lot of time to sit there. I'm familiar with the band, I know how they play, I know how they write, and this time it's going to be a whole different experience. Is there a lot of pressure to make a follow-up to Relativity? No, nah, not really at all. Actually, it's going to be a lot easier. We don't, there's not going to be a lot of stress. 
this whole stress was, you know, I was in the band, all the songs were written, I didn't have a chance to, you know, get down with the songs, have a chance to really group them. This time I'm going to have a full chance while they're writing the songs to know them, learn them, love them, and just put my put my magic on it. So. Very nice. The, the vocals I hear on Relativity seem a lot different from what I've heard on uh, whatever you say is Royal Ocean, Downtown Battle Mountain. Is it true that you were inebriated during recording both those records? Um, that is actually, it's positive. That was pretty fucked up. That's why one of the songs on, uh, on Downtown Battle Mountain is called Strawberry Andre, because we drank a lot of the Strawberry Andre while we were recording it. And um, <laughs> I didn't drink at all, actually. Taylor Shea!